Hi, my name is Rui Vasconcelos and I'm a product manager at Canonical. Today, I'm going to show you how to deploy Kubeflow on any Kubernetes using Juju. For this, I'm going to use MicroKates as an example, but make sure I show you how to do this on any particular Kubernetes. I hope you enjoy. To start, we will create a fresh Ubuntu 2004 instance and for that we will use AWS EC2 service. We will choose Ubuntu 2004 as an operating system. We will choose T3 2x large as an instance type because it has 8 vGPUs and 32 gigabyte of memory. So we'll have enough resources to run Kubeflow plus the workloads we want to run on top. And we will give it 100 gigabyte of storage so that uh, we have also enough space for everything. So let's go ahead and launch that and we will um, access this instance so we can then install um, Kubeflow and, and run with it. Once we access the instance, the first thing we will do is install MicroKates and then install Juju. And for that we will use sudo snap install commands. We can use the snap list command to see all the snaps installed and verify that microcates and juju are already installed. We will try to use the microcate status wait rather command um, and we will be asked to add Ubuntu to the user groups of microcates so that uh, it has enough permissions. Let's go ahead and do that. Once we do that, we need to exit our current session and SSH to the machine again so that our permissions get written. And as you can see, now we can use microcades status command. Now that we have microcades installed and that we can run microcades commands, we'll need to create an alias to use kubectl command with microcades, and we can do it like this. Let's also enable basic microcade services such as DNS and storage so that we can use them for our Kubeflow deployment. If we look at all the pods that are currently running on microcades with the kubectl get po a command, we, we can see that two pods have been created under kube system namespace um, and we can see as well that two were already running for about nine minutes uh, so the, these are automatically created and these are calico um, pods before we use juju to deploy kubeflow let's go ahead and verify that there's no juju models or controllers registered so next let's try to add uh, our Kubernetes to, um, to Juju as a cloud. Um, and for that, we will use the Juju add Kates command. And here we will fail initially because microcade does not store the kubeconfig file on .cube slash config, which is the default path. And so we will have to move the configuration to this default location. And then Juju will be able to add this Kubernetes as a cloud. Then we will have to create a Juju controller uh, so that we can attach models to it and then deploy our custom Kubeflow to one of the Juju models. To do that, we will use the Juju bootstrap command and, and bootstrap the Kubernetes cloud that we previously uh, Told Juju existed. So uh, we will create a controller to myk8s and we will call it myController and use the bootstrap command to do this. We can then use the Juju controllers command and see that this controller was created. If we look at the pods, uh, we will see that a couple of controller pods under the controller myController namespace were created. Finally, we will use the juju add model command to create a model named kubeflow. And we can use the juju models command to see 
uh, that this has been created. At the same time, if we go and look at the namespaces, we will see that we've created as well a Kubeflow namespace. And so when we deploy Kubeflow, this is the namespace that all the Kubeflow applications will be attached to. And finally, to deploy Kubeflow, we just have to juju deploy the Kubeflow version we want. In this case, we're going to use Kubeflow Lite, which is a lightweight version um, for desktop use. And we will watch as all these applications, uh, all the, the operators and relations are getting spun up with the watch command on the right. On the right, we will be watching things from a Juju perspective. And on the left, we can also watch um, things from a Kubernetes perspective, seeing all the pods getting spun up in real time. This will now take a few minutes, so let's speed it up and watch as it gets deployed. It seems that we've reached almost a steady state here and we can see that the Istio ingress gateway is blocked. This is because currently you need to apply a patch manually um, to unblock this process and that's what we're gonna do. Once this patch is applied, you can see that all the deployment gets to an active state. To show you how configurable the deployment really is, let's go and deploy Argo UI, which is a service that we didn't deploy uh, previously with Kubeflow Lite, uh, with Juju Deploy Argo UI. And let's relate that, or uh, meaning integrate that, to Istio Ingress Gateway. Um, or Istio uh, pilot service and we can see that dynamically in real time our deployment on the right is responding to whatever we do on uh, the left and we can remove now those relations and also to remove uh, the application Argo UI so it's pretty dynamic okay so to finalize the deployment let's go ahead and access the dashboard and see if everything works we are gonna first go to charmedkubeflow.io uh, documentation and see the documentation to access the dashboard. We will see that initially our authentication is empty. So we'll go ahead and create uh, authentication methods um, and specify a password and username. We will then be able to see uh, with our Kubernetes services that Istio Gateway uh, is still in a pending state. It still didn't expose the IP. And this is because we are missing still one step and here it's metal LB in the case of microcades. So we will go ahead and enable metal LB so that we have uh, load balancing uh, available. And then we can see with the services that Istio service already had has an exposed port. In order to access the dashboard, we need to set up a proxy. To do that, let's exit our current session and log in again with the tag D-D9999 uh, D 9999 as a port for, um, for this proxy. And then we will have to go to settings in our computer or in our browser and, and set up that proxy to the same port. It looks like we still are not able to access the dashboard and this is because we missed a step. So we recommend following the instructions in the documentation um, and you will see that uh, there are a few steps manually required still. And the step we missed was the configuration of DEX off and OIDC. And let's go ahead and add those. With all these steps done, now we can see that we already have access to the IP that um, holds the dashboard and we just need credentials to get in. Um, and we've set up these credentials before with username as admin and password as my password. So we can go ahead and access the dashboard.
and we're in so now we can take a quick look at what this dashboard looks like so um, if you're familiar with kubeflow it has uh, pipelines experiments and and so on and the notebook servers and here you can uh, get going with your kubeflow experiments i hope you have enjoyed this demo and that you will try it on yourself and let us know how that goes thank you